Hello everyone and welcome to this week's extension quick tip tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be going over tons of resources you can use external to these videos that will help you learn more about extensions and all about them. So fortunately there are free resources available, but there are some you may have to pay for if you want to sort of go the extra mile when it comes to making installers, uh, signing your extensions so that they work properly on all systems and other things. So let's go ahead and get started. I just have a list of the resources here and we'll go through them one by one. And a quick note before we start, if you guys happen to use the Brave browser, uh, I do have my channel verified to receive basic attention token tips. So if you've already got it set up, don't worry about setting it up just to send me a tip because there is a bit of KYC uh, involved where you need to set up your account and verify some things. But if you already have it set up and have some basic attention token, you feel free to donate. Uh, it's really helpful and will help continue the channel. The first resource is that you may want to learn HTML, JavaScript, and CSS before you start learning extensions. These are sort of the prerequisites because you're basically using scripts that are built on top of an HTML web page. The way scripts work are they have a panel which is composed of HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and the type of elements you would see on a website, which gives you much more design control than a regular script. And then that has the ability to go ahead and interface with the script and do things within After Effects, Premiere, and other applications. So the first resource you may want to take a look at is w3schools.com, where a lot of people learn the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I refer to this website a lot when scripting, uh, especially for the random function and a lot of other useful methods. Basically, you want to make sure you have a good foundation, know what you're looking at when you're using HTML, and be able to manipulate things. And it's also important to know how to include other libraries if you want to include other elements. But the main thing is to just have a good understanding of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And if you're a complete beginner, HTML is basically hypertext markup language that is used to design web pages. CSS is used on the back end to help design things and make them have certain styles. And JavaScript is basically the glue that holds all these together and allows interactivity. You can use it to dynamically change the design of things, interact with scripts, and do lots of other useful things. So in reality, if you are starting from scratch, you may want to just go through the entire website uh, and learn everything they have to offer. It has a nice um, set of certificates you can get. You can go through tests. You can go through each page one after the other. And it has useful examples which you can try yourself and modify to get the full understanding of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, a paid resource that I've used personally to learn some advanced stuff is using David Barranca's website. Not only is this guy really smart and open to answer any questions you ask him sometimes, uh, he also has some great books, two of which I have personally purchased, the HTML Panels Development Book. Although it says it's for Adobe Photoshop, it applies for all CEP or extension development. And I've also purchased the Ultimate Guide to Native Installers, which will give you a full in-depth guide on how to make Mac and Windows installers, how to sign them and make sure everything is gonna run smoothly when you distribute your extension to any prospective users. So a lot of people only want free resources, but I used to think the same thing until I purchased one of these books because it really does open the doors to increase your income and knowledge. And it's very important that you invest in yourself if you're really looking into build extensions um, because extensions are very complicated and the prices you'll be charging for them will be a little bit higher than scripts, of course. So spending $100 or $50 on a book that contains tons of resources is very useful. And honestly, basically after two months after I purchased this HTML panels book, I was already creating extensions for users and making the money up within just a few weeks. And I'm not gonna actually show the book because I'm not sure how the copyright and all that works for this, but essentially inside of this, it will take you through everything from starting your extension from scratch to making installers to using external libraries like React and Vulkan. And it's just got a lot of useful information uh, that can be used in tandem with these free resources. The next resource is the Adobe CEP GitHub. This will have all the practical examples you could ever want. Um, if you go into samples, getting started guides, and CEP resources, these will all have very useful things to help you not only get started making extensions, but also look at the sort of cutting edge and all the methods that are possible uh, inside of them. 
So if you look at the getting started, you can see it's got a nice little guide that'll tell you how to launch your extension, and then it will start to discuss the folder structure of how things need to be set up, how to configure your manifest file so that your extension is glued together well and appears properly in your program. And then it goes over all the other types of code that you need to include in order to have a basic extension up and running. They also include an uh, entire sample section which has a bunch of different samples you can load up and use. Um, and then it has the whole list here for what the panel works in and what the panel does. So if you're looking for a specific feature that you're not sure how to program, I would recommend looking in the samples here and they have a lot of useful things. So you can click on say the After Effects panel and maybe you're not sure what the JavaScript code does. So you look inside here and can say, okay, here's what's happening, here's how things interact. And these are actually super useful because not only are they free, but they have lots of useful code in them that can help you out. Um, I should recommend as a side note, the Premiere Pro panel is extremely um, useful and it contains a lot of cutting edge things that I refer to a lot uh, in order to see what is possible in Premiere scripting. Since it is limited, uh, it includes a lot of useful things. And the last thing on the Adobe CEP GitHub is all of the CEP documentation. CEP is essentially the extensibility that allows extensions to interact with Adobe and scripts. The newest version I believe is CEP 9, but there might be 10 in development. Um, essentially what you can do is go into any of these and download it. It includes some external libraries, but the main thing you're gonna need for any extension at the bare minimum is the csinterface.js. And what this contains, if you've seen the previous video we just did last week, um, it basically contains all of the useful functions that you can use to interact with your extension. For example, the method to evaluate a JavaScript extended script or JSX file is in here. The ability to close your extension is in here. And all sorts of useful um, methods are contained inside of here. The next resource and a sort of newer resource is to go to Adobe IO and inside of here it has all of the APIs for any of the Adobe programs. Uh, APIs are typically only for plugin development and the SDK, but you can also get access um, by going into the SDK here to the CEP or panel information. So for example, if I click on Premiere, it's gonna have the Premiere Pro plugin SDK, but as you can see, it also includes the CEP or panel SDK, which is just another word for the useful documentation. Um, and this will include links to sort of what I was just showing you. Um, but essentially you can use this to get the most up-to-date documentation if this video becomes out of date. And you can click on any of the other applications like Illustrator, and then you can see here, the uh, CEP is gonna take us directly to the important parts of the GitHub we need to go to. And lastly, the last resource would be my own video tutorial series. Uh, right now, I just have one video in this extension playlist, but I have a few previous extension videos that I'll add to here, and all the videos in the future for about extensions will be inside of here. So if you need to quickly look up a quick tip of how to do something, you can come in here, or if you need a full-fledged tutorial with tons of detail, you can come into this playlist as well to get those free resources. But that's gonna do it for this week's quick tip tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Those are the best resources is available right now to learn extensions and get started. Although one or two of them do require money, they're not entirely required. You can get away with not spending any money, but I would highly recommend spending a little bit of money to invest in yourself if you're looking to develop extensions professionally. If you guys have any questions or comments for future videos, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it to be notified of new uploads coming out twice weekly on Monday and Thursday. And don't forget this month is all about extensions. We're going to be posting quick tips and full length tutorials on how to make them. All of the links for this will be in the description down below where you can uh, check them out. As well, you can follow us on Instagram and be notified when new uploads are coming out. But that's going to do it for this week's quick tip tutorial, guys. We'll see you in the next one.